Welcome to part 9 of creating visual movie effects in Blender. In this video we'll be creating the Harry Potter Lumos Maxima wandlet effect. Let's go ahead and minimize Blender and check out the final result. Alright, so in this video you'll notice a few things are happening. When I first walk in, the wand is not lit, it becomes lit. Um, not only is there a glow around the wand, but there's also a lit area that's brighter, it's a circular area around the wand. Um, you'll also notice that the video is color graded or it's quite blue, that was done intentionally. Um, what you also might not notice is that before the wand is lit and after it's lit, um, I've actually masked out um, the marker that's on the end of my wand to make it no longer bright or noticeable. Let's go ahead and close the video and jump back into Blender. On the screen right now, I'll show you a picture of the wand that I use. It's actually just a twig that I found on the ground uh, and chopped off the ends and a sub-branch of it. Um, I put a little marker made out of electrical tape in red and then a smaller one in yellow just on the very end of the wand uh, to make it trackable. Um, let's go ahead and click on the splash screen to get rid of it. In this video, we're going to be covering tracking. Now, tracking is going to be used to follow that marker on the end of the wand uh, so that we can not have to animate the actual glowing moving around. We'll be using masking for a few reasons. We'll be using nodes to add effects. And we'll be doing some digital color grading to make the overall video not its original color. Let's go ahead and divide this window into two by grabbing this little cross-hatched area and dragging it to the left. We actually want three windows though, so I'm going to grab this little cross-hatched area up here and drag it straight down because we will be working a tiny bit in 3D. If you're not familiar with using 3D in Blender, I'll put a link to my whole tutorial series and using Blender 2.7 on the screen right now. Uh, so if you're not familiar with at least navigating in the 3D world, adding objects and adding uh, materials in the Blender Cycles render engine. Um, uh, you can click on that and check out that whole video series. Uh, it is important that for the rest of this video you have your render engine up here set to the Cycles render engine and not the Blender game or Blender render engine. The Cycles render engine uh, changes the way that you add materials and the way that you make the background of your 3D scene transparent. Okay, we're going to leave this window up here as a 3D viewport. We're going to change this window down here into a node editor window. So I'll click on this little button here and change it right there to node editor window. This window over here is going to be a movie clip editor window. Let's go ahead and change that now, right there. Let's go ahead down in the node editor window and I'm going to change my node mode over to compositing nodes right there. And we'll click on use nodes and backdrop. Of course we get two nodes. We get a render layers node and a composite node. And yes, we are going to have a 3D object which will actually just be a glowing ball that will attach um, using what's called an empty to the end of our wand. So I'm going to leave that render layers node because we need it. That's how we get um, content from a 3D scene into our nodes. But I'm also going to add a image node to bring in our movie. So I'll press shift A on my keyboard with my mouse in this window, shift A, and I'll bring in an input, a image input. That might look a little bit different than you're used to because you are probably thinking we're bringing in a movie clip and that's true, but this image node can be used to bring in movie clips and it's a little bit more powerful. You can edit or time shift with this image uh, node. Let's go ahead and click open and on my desktop there is a file called mvi underscore 9675.mov. This was taken with my Canon uh, T3i digital camera uh, just on a tripod, although a tripod is not necessary. Um, I basically did this because it has good focusing and it was on my tripod already. Let's go ahead and click on open image and it brings it in. Now by default this image node um, it does not think that the movie has any frames. It's set to frames a number of zero. So I'm just going to click in there and type in 30,000 why not and press enter. I don't actually know how many frames it has but that's just a really big number so we're all good to go. Um, let's go ahead and open that same movie file over here and we're going to check out where we actually want to start the video because I don't want to start it right at frame one. Um, I want to time shift it. That's why we're using this image node and not the movie node. So over here, I'll click on open, go to my desktop, find the same movie file right there and open clip and I can zoom out and let's go ahead and check out where I want to start. So I turned the camera on, I walked. Um, out of the frame and I think I want to start actually right at 250 before I walk in. So 
I know I want to start this movie clip at 250. I have to change what's called the offset in a couple of places. Down here in this node, the offset value is where you actually want to start in the original video file. So I'll click in there and type 250 and press enter. And then over here, to make sure that this node and this window over here match, uh, because we'll be doing some tracking um, and some other things in this window, I need to go down to footage settings. And then in footage settings is where we also have a frame offset. And we'll type in the same exact number, 250, and press enter. Don't get confused between start frame and frame offset. They are different things. So now if I scrub through, I should see the exact same frame in that little preview and this window. I think we're good to go. Let's go ahead and do some tracking. Uh, if I scrub through my timeline, um, I hold the wand up after looking around a little bit, and you can actually see right now that little marker, um, it's really too blurred out for you to see the yellow marker, except for a little bit of yellow uh, in the middle of the wand, but it is bright, especially against my black t-shirt. So what I'll do is, because I'm in the tracking mode of this window, is if I hold control down on my keyboard and left click in the window, um, I can make a new tracking marker. So I did that, just hold control and left click. I'm gonna scale this um, tracking marker down with the S key, I'll tap S, and move my mouse inwards and there's my tracking marker now because um, this one might move quite quickly at some places and because there's probably some motion blur what I want to do is over here in the properties panel and you can click the little plus if you don't have it is under tracking settings I'm not gonna match the keyframe that I set we're at frame 151 right now um, I'm gonna match uh, when it's looking in each new frame not this frame that I wanna match, but I'm gonna match the previous frame. So when it gets to 152, it's gonna look for 151's version of this tracking marker. And then when it gets to frame 165, it's not gonna look for frames uh, 151's uh, image again. It's look, gonna look for 164's image again. So always looking for uh, an adaptation of the previous frame's version in case there's streaking or motion blur, or in case the perspective on the end of the wand changes. Okay, let's go ahead and prefetch our footage. And that means that we'll just be loading in this video into Blender's uh, RAM on your computer. So I'm gonna click here up on prefetch. If you don't have that window or panel, you can press T or this little plus. Prefetch, great. You'll notice that this little purple or blue bar uh, propagated out, it filled in, so now it doesn't have gaps in it. Great, let's go ahead and track a few frames forward. Okay, so that was pretty successful. If I track around just one frame at a time, it's looking quite good. It's doing a good job of tracking. There's high contrast in this area. I'm gonna track forward now. Okay, actually that made it all the way to the end. If I scrub through and just watch the tracking marker and watch up here at the same time, you'll see that it's doing a pretty good job. Um, okay, that looks pretty good to me. In fact, I actually don't want to end the video right at 250 though. I'm going to change my end value to 350 because I happen to know from this footage that that's about where I, after I turn off the wand, I start to walk away. So I'm going to cut the video off right at 350. So as you can see down here, um, the tracked frames ended at about, we'll just use our arrow keys on the keyboard. It ended at 250, so I'm going to keep going. And as you can see, because we chose match previous frame, it kind of catches that motion blur a bit better and is able to track even though it's blurring. Okay, so I tracked the 314 and then it got stuck uh, because the tip of the wand went up above my skin. So I'm gonna uh, select that marker and press G and manually make a keyframe uh, right there. And then I'll track individually uh, for a few frames, just making sure it's always in the middle of the marker. And, aha, a big amount of motion blur here. Um, there's not much I can do about that. The wand was just moving really fast. And this video is only recorded at 30 pictures per second. So if you're recording at a higher frame rate, you might get less motion blur. Um, sure, right about there. Let's go to the next frame. There it is. And let's go to the next frame. There it is. And. There it is. Yes, I think now at this point we can maybe track forward automatically and it ends quite nicely there. So we only have to track um, manually uh, a few keyframes, maybe five or seven keyframes uh, there. 
Okay, let's go ahead and go back to our starting point, which I believe was 151, and let's track backwards. And I'll track just all the way. Oh, we can't, it got stuck. So right about there. And it went all the way to 144. Okay, you know what? That's actually okay because that's where the wand is going to turn on anyways. Um, so at 145, there is a tracking marker um, or it's successfully tracked. But at 144, there is not. And so what I'll do actually is I'm going to place a false location. I want this marker to be off the screen. Um, in fact, way off the screen. And you'll see why uh, later in this video. So at frame 144, where there is no tracking information, I'll select the marker and press G. And I'll move it way up here so that from frame 1 all the way to this location. Oops, did that not work? All right, I'm not sure why that happened. I just cut out the video there for a, a minute or so. Um, I just made two keyframes, one at frame 144 and one at frame 143 of the tracking marker being up top, uh, way up top, at least as high away from the original video um, as itself, so twice as high away of the video as the height of the video itself. Great, so now for the first 142 frames or 144 frames, uh, the tracking marker is way up top. What happens at the end of the video? I believe the tracking marker just stays with the wand because we are cutting it off at frame 350. Great, let's go ahead and do a little bit of masking now. Because there is a brightly colored marker at the end of the wand, um, we don't want that to be there at the end of the video. So I'm actually going to create a mask. So in this window, I'll press A to deselect that mask. I'm going to change the mode over to mask mode. And we're going to left click to put this cursor right at the end of the wand. And we're going to add a circle. Or you can press Shift A to bring up the add menu. And you can add a circle. Um, if I try to, with all of these uh, circle markers or circle points selected, I can press A to select them all. If I try to press S, they won't scale. And that's because if I orbit down here, if I press my mouse wheel down like a button and drag, um, this little pivot point menu is set to individual origins, but I want to scale from a medium point. Individual origins will not let you scale or rotate a mask, so we'll use medium point. I'll tap S. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller than the end of the wand, right about there. And then I'll hold Shift on my keyboard and left click and drag out a, a feather line. And we're going to make it bigger than the end of the wand just so that it takes away as much as it can. And that's looking pretty good. I'm going to call this mask.wand because over in our node editing window, we're going to replace that or cover up a marker with the same brown as the wand. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to make this window over here a little bit narrower and this one shorter. And we haven't connected most of our footage together yet. Let's go ahead and move our composite window. In fact, I'm going to press control up arrow with my mouse in this window to make it full screen. I'm going to press Shift A now, and I'm going to add a color alpha over it. That's the node that actually lets you layer videos or image sources one above the other. And I'm going to drag this alpha over node into this connecting noodle between the render layers of our 3D scene and the output composite node. And I'm going to connect the image of our video to the top input port, which will move the render layers down. We haven't made anything in our 3D scene yet, uh, but that's okay. What we're going to do now is take our video source. In fact, I'm going to click on Use Nodes and Backdrop. That's very important. Nodes won't actually work until you <laughs> click on Use Nodes. And we're going to add a backdrop. So I'm going to press uh, Shift A. And I'm going to add an output of Viewer. And I'll put it right there. And right here, we want to split this noodle and have two outputs, our composite output and our viewer output, which lets us have a backdrop in this window. So I'm going to hold Shift. This is something new in my videos I haven't done yet. I'm going to hold Shift. I'm going to left click and drag through this noodle. If you hold Shift and left click and drag through it, it makes one of those uh, reroute nodes. Uh, if you hold Control down and left click and drag, it cuts through a noodle and gets rid of it, but Shift and left click and drag will make one of these 
uh, reroute nodes. I'm going to connect that up just by clicking and dragging, and so now I have a backdrop. I want to cover up this little dot using the mask I just created uh, with a brown circle. And so I'm going to press Shift A. I'm going to add another color alpha over. And the image that's going to go on top of this original video is going to be just a little brown circle. And what I'll do first, though, is I'm going to add in that mask. So I'll press Shift A. We'll input a mask. I'll click and put it right there and I'll connect it up to the factor of the alpha over and we'll use the mask.wand and if I kind of um, actually I need my timeline so I'm going to go out of this full screen mode just by pressing control up arrow and you can see now that dot is there uh, right there I have not yet parented it to the tracking marker or the, the, the tracker so it's not in the right spot unless I go back to the right frame. Actually, I just realized that we were on frame 350 when we placed, and I'll press T and N over here, when we made this mask and placed it right at the end of the wand. But because over here in the properties window under the camera tab, we have a resolution set to 50%, um, it's not in the same spot. So I'm gonna just drag that up to 100. And hopefully, if I just press my arrow keys left and right, now just to refresh the frames or to scrub around, Right at 350, that white dot is right over the end of the wand. That's what I want. What I want to do now is I want to select the same brown color. And this is just sort of a cheap and dirty and fast kind of way of removing tracking markers. So I'm going to click in this little white area of our alpha over. And I'll use my eyedropper, which will let me select a color. And I'm just going to click somewhere on my wand right about there. And so I get that nice brown color. And now the tracking marker is fairly covered up. It's not perfect. If I wanted to actually go through and animate the shape of my mask to perfectly cover up uh, the marker, even when it was motion blurred, I could do that. I don't care that much for this video example. Let's go ahead and move on. We want to work with our 3D scene now and add the glowing ball and they can attach to the um, end of the one. Actually, I forgot one thing. This mask is not yet parented to the tracking marker, so it will not move, it'll just stay in the same spot. I don't want that. So over here in the movie clip editor window, um, we are in mask mode. I'm gonna press A a few times to select the entire circle mask. Now I'll hold shift and right click to select the square tracking marker and I'll press control P to parent the mask to the tracking marker control P of course parents objects together uh, the first one is the child the, the last one you select is the parent great so if I scrub through now after I zoom out you'll see that that mask follows the tip of the wand except at the very beginning it shoots off that's exactly what I want perfection let's go ahead and work in 3d now I'll make that window smaller and we'll make this window bigger. Um, I'm gonna right click to select the camera in my scene and I'm gonna press Alt R and then Alt G to move the camera back to the middle of the scene. I don't need this cube so I'll right click to select it and I'll press X and then delete to get rid of it. I'll move the camera straight up and if your cursor is not in the middle of your scene right there, you can press Shift C. Shift C will kind of zoom so you can see everything and put your 3D cursor back in the middle. I'm gonna press Shift A I'm gonna add a mesh uh, UV sphere. Um, we can make the UV sphere be a lot less detailed. That will speed things up for us. So over here in your tool shelf, in this bottom section, which if you don't have, you can click on this little plus. I'm gonna change segments to 16 and uh, rings to eight, and I'll press enter just to make it a lower poly sphere. And I'll tap S and I'll scale it quite a bit down. And let's press zero on our numpad to go through the camera view and I'll keep on scaling that way down just so it's about the same size as our cursor or right about there. You can just kind of estimate how you want, um, how big you want this to be. Let's go ahead now and composite together this scene into our video or on top of the video. Now, if I try to render out this scene, uh, it will have a gray background. And so we want to enable a transparent background. And again, this process is different if you are not using the Cycles Render Engine, so I would highly suggest doing that, switching this menu over to Cycles Render if you haven't already. And then over here in the Properties window, with the sphere selected under the Orb tab, we're going to add a new material. I don't want a diffuse, just a plain old color material. I want to have an emission shader. I'm going to make that color uh, perfectly bright white just by clicking on the color and sliding that up. Perfection. Let's go ahead now 
And under the camera tab, um, under film, this is where we can check transparent to again make the background of our render not a gray color, not the sky or world color. We want transparent. Great. Let's go ahead and do a test render now. So if I kind of make this window bigger and press V to zoom out the background and hold Alt and orbit around to kind of put it where we can see it. If I go up to the top of the camera tab in the properties window, we can click on a render and it will actually render out the scene. Um, it's going quite slowly because cycles is set to a high number of samples by default um, when it renders out. And now it's put that white orb over our scene. Of course, we haven't linked the orb um, to the end of my wand yet. I'm going to speed up rendering first though. I'll press escape and then under the camera tab again, way down under the sampling section, I'm going to change my number of render samples from 128 all the way down to 10. That will way speed up our render. So again, under render now, rendering is way sped up and there's the orb. We want to actually, from our tracking information now, um, create what's called an empty in our 3D scene. So I'm going to go back into tracking mode and with the tracker selected, I can press A a few times to make sure it's white and selected. Um, I'm going to open up this Windows tool shelf, not to be confused with some other panel right there. And then under solve, again with the marker selected, um, there is a section called geometry. So we're in the solve tab and under geometry. With this marker selected, we want to click on Link Empty to Track. And an empty is a point object. It looks like a little cross or a 3D plus in our scene um, that doesn't actually take up any volume, but it specifies a coordinate um, that it can actually make linked to this tracking marker as if the camera was this video's camera. So I'm going to click on Link Empty to Track. And now, if I go back over to my 3D viewport, you can see there is an empty, this plus, which is actually, if I press zero to break out of my camera, uh, not just a plus, but it goes on all three axes. But through our camera view, which is again zero on your numpad to get to that window, um, it's right there. And if I scrub through, you'll see that it starts off the screen like it should, like my tracker did. If I scrub through now, you can see it moving around. And over here, I'll press T and make this a bit wider you can see that it is in the exact same spot as the tip of my wand through the 3D scenes camera. That's exactly what I want, but I want to put this orb exactly where this empty is and then parent the orb to the empty. So I'm going to zoom in over here. Notice how I can just scroll to make the frame bigger. That's because I do not have lock camera to view uh, checked under the, the side uh, end properties panel. Great. I'm going to right click to select this empty. I'll press Shift S on my keyboard. Uh, Shift S brings up this snap menu where I can say uh, cursor to select it. That'll move this 3D cursor over to what I have selected. So Shift S, cursor to selected. And then I'll select my orb or the UV sphere. And then I'll press Shift S again. And this time we're going to select selection to cursor. Okay, so it's a few steps there. Uh, cursor to selected and then selection to cursor. Okay, so then now this um, sphere is at the same location at this random frame as the uh, empty. So now I'm going to select the orb or sphere, hold shift and right click and select the uh, empty second. So I have the uh, sphere and then hold shift and select the empty. And I'll press control P and set the parent of the sphere as the empty. So now if I scrub through, the orb moves through the scene as well. We can't see it down here yet though. It's not moving around because again, this is a 3D scene and it has to be rendered uh, for each frame. So if I wanna see what it looks like at frame 170, I have to actually go up here and click on a render. But as you can see, it is at the end of the wand, and that's exactly what I want. And it looks like it's a little bit bigger than a ping pong ball or a golf ball, which is what I want. Okay, time to do some filtering to make this actually look like it's glowing. So there are several things we're going to do here to uh, make it look like it's not just a ball, but it's a light source. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a glare node um, in between the render layers, which is actually our 3D scene, and that alpha over. Let's go ahead and press Shift A. And then under filter, we're going to add a glare node. And that has a few options, but I'm going to drag that into this noodle after render layers. 
and we want to set this first option from streaks to a simple star and what that will do is once I turn down threshold I'm not sure why this threshold is set to 1 by default uh, but that just basically means it's turned off um, but if I turn that down you can start to see it have a simple 4 uh, point star or streaks away from it if I turn up fade it should make those streaks longer and then if I turn up iterations it should also make those streaks longer I just don't want this to look like a circle in the end I want it to look like a kind of well a star or a explosion <laughs> to touch the end of the wand great let's go ahead and add another glare node so I'll press shift a under filter I'll add another glare node and I'll put it right there this time I do want streaks and as you can see it's took the result of these two nodes with the simple star and it's made it all streaked out and that is what I want there is a cool effect here though if I don't want it to be just white I can slide up this color and what does it say color modulation uh, slider all the way up to one or actually I'll click in there and type 0 0.9 and if you look at the resulting effect, is it going to do it? Uh, you can see if you look very closely, there are some uh, colors that are not white coming off the edge of this section. What I'm going to do though, is I don't want just four streaks. I'm going to turn this up to several more streaks. And then, ah, uh, there's threshold. It's against it to one. I'll turn it down to zero. I'm not sure why they do that. Um, I'm going to turn the fade up. And as you can see, we have this bright, looks like a flower. Uh, that's probably too much. I'll turn that down. Um, I also might want to change the angle. I'll turn that back up actually a little bit, maybe 0 0.95 right there. Um, I'll change the angle just by dragging in here, just so it's not at a perfect uh, up and down. So it looks like it's a little bit askew. Uh, there we go. I think I will change iterations up to 5. And I think I might turn color modulation down to 0.75. So it's not quite so intense of a color. Uh, it's more close to white, maybe 0.85. There we go. Um, let's go ahead and turn up the number of streaks. I've got 12, I'll type in 18 instead. Um, I'm actually speeding up, just so you know, um, every time I do a, ch a setting change in the node editor window, it has to render out or process all the filters, and I'm speeding each one of those little times up just to save this video length. Uh, but yours will take longer every time you enter into something new. It'll have to redraw out your preview using all the different nodes in your node editor window. Okay, so we have this. What we actually want to do now is add another duplicate glare. And we're going to change a few of the settings just to make it look not quite so predictable. So I'll press, uh, with this glare node selected, I'll press Shift D to duplicate it, and I'll put it right next to it. I'm going to change the angle offset um, to something a little bit different. So right here, I'll just scroll uh, to make it random. I'll change the number of streaks to something maybe higher, like 30. And I'll press enter. Can we type in 30? No. Can we type in 24? No. What's the max number of streaks we can do? Is it 16? Maybe I'll turn it down to 9 and press enter. It's looking pretty good, but it's too bright and maybe it's too colorful. So I'm going to turn color mix on. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it's gotten even brighter and it's probably too colorful, so I'll turn this color uh, modulation down a bit. Okay, this is our result. Um, we're going to do a few more things though. We are going to blur this so the streaks aren't quite so evident. Um, and we're going to turn down the brightness but keep the same approximate size of this glow area. So I'm going to press Shift A and I'm going to add a filter blur. And I'll add that right there after the gl last glare that I added. Uh, let's go ahead and organize these nodes a little bit better. In fact, I'm going to press A a few times to make sure nothing in this node editor window is selected. Then I'll press B to box select, and now I can click and drag. Um, of course, B is box select in your 3D window as well. Uh, I've selected all of these nodes, and I'll press G to move them over just so things stay a bit more organized. Um, we want to apply a Gaussian blur, um, and I'm going to change that to maybe 10 and 10. Actually, let's try 20 and 20 and see what that does. All right, so that kind of made the streaks not quite so apparent. What we want to do next, actually what I'll do, I think these streaks are still too colorful. I'm going to turn down the color modulation um, in both of these two glares. Actually, no, let's go ahead and turn those back up. I'll type in 0.65 for both of them. 
actually 0 0.75 let's try out that okay let's go ahead and make this not so bright it's looking good but again this area is way too big uh, if I press shift A now I'm gonna add and this is the very last node that we'll add to make the glowing look the way it should is we'll add shift A a color RGB curves node this is a very powerful color adjusting node. Um, right now we are in the C, that means just black and white and the brightness and contrast. We can also adjust uh, the red, green, and blue channels if we want to change the colors of this area. But under C, I'm just going to drag this right top point almost all the way down to, so it's not quite at the 25% mark, and I'll let go. And again, once that's processed, it will make this uh, bright area shrink. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Maybe I want it to be a little bit smaller. I'll drag that down a bit more and maybe a tad more. All right, that's looking pretty darn good to me. Of course, this entire time, because I've already rendered out my scene once, um, over here in our uh, image editor window, um, it's, this is showing our render result, and so that's what it will actually look like. We want to, at this point now, color grade our scene. Uh, that means make it not be its original color set, the colors are very warm and I'm very tanned right now. So let's make it look like uh, it's at nighttime and have a blue cast over it. And then we're going to actually make the video around the wand brighter like the wand is actually illuminating the scene. Now obviously in the movies with a higher budget, they probably had a wand that actually had a light in the end of it to actually illuminate the scene and they also probably augmented that with other lights to make it look like you know shadows were being cast up on the characters faces and around to other objects but in this case we're just going to play around with the settings in the video to make a brighter area uh, around the wand itself so let's go ahead and in our node editor window we're going to do some color grading um, we have the original footage, which we are combining um, with a mask to make a brown area over the tip of the wand, which you can only see uh, later in the video if I render out the video at a later frame. Um, hopefully that bright glowing wand will be way off the top with um, nothing else. Let's go ahead and click on render and we're not quite at the point yet where I've shaken off the Lumos so I'm going to go all the way maybe to frame um, 345 and click render. No, the uh, because the tracking marker stayed with my one until the very end, uh, one last thing I need to do to make the turn off actually work is animate the influence that my tracking marker has to this empty. As you recall earlier in this video, um, after we did some tracking on our original video, I'm going to press escape over here to go back to that tracking. Uh, the tracking marker actually does follow the wand until the end of the video at 350. It cuts off right here. But I want the wand to turn off right at frame um, 319. So at 320, the wand should be off, this orb should go away, and we'll just shoot it off the edge of the screen. In order to do that, if I make my 3D view window a bit bigger, and I'll press N to hide the side panel, we want to move this empty off the screen at frame 320. But if I just try to grab it, if I select it and press G, I can't move it. And that's because it's parented using what's called a constraint to this tracking marker. And so I'm going to select this empty and over here in the properties window under this little links tab you can see that there is a follow track constraint uh, when this object is selected which means that it's on the empty and it has this influence slider and we can actually turn this off and as you can see that uh, empty slides back to the middle along with the sphere its child um, but I want to animate this slider so normally it's at 1 and at frame 319 it should be one but I'm actually gonna put my mouse over the slider and I'm gonna press I at frame 319 this is the last frame where it should be there so I'll put my mouse over there and I'll press I on my keyboard and I inserts a keyframe so you can see that this is turned yellow and you can actually see the keyframe right there and then on frame 320 I'll just use my right arrow to jump one over to the next frame I'm going to slide this influence down to zero and then with a mouse over it, I'll press I again to insert a keyframe. So now, if I scrub through, the influence of the tracking marker on the empty is at 1 or 
but when it gets to frame 320, it goes immediately down to zero in the span of one frame. And so now at frame 320, I can select the um, tracking marker and I can press G. I'm gonna move it way up um, out of the scene, right about there. So now if I scrub through, it's still gonna be in the right spot, hopefully. Let's go ahead and do a, a quick test render. I'll go to the camera tab and I'll make this narrower and I'll click render. Yes, it's in the right spot um, and we didn't have to animate that at all. That was my worry there. Um, but now if we get to frame 319 and I render that out, you can see that it's in the right spot. Uh, but if I move one frame over to 320 down here and I press render again, the light is now gone. It's Perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and do some digital color grading um, and then add that light around the end of the wand. Uh, let's go ahead and do a quick save though yet. I haven't saved yet, so file save. I'm just going to save onto my desktop in the same location as the source video. I'm going to call this VFX-009-001 um, just to make sure that this is version 1 and save Blender file. Perfection. Let's go ahead and add some nodes now. So I'll make the node editor window uh, quite a bit larger. Notice how our nodes is getting um, more complicated. Uh, that's okay. It's going to get a bit more complicated, especially down in this area where we're dealing with our footage. Okay, we have combined the footage with the dummy tip of the wand that's just brown using the mask. And so let's go ahead now after that and uh, make this scene a uh, different color. So I'll press Shift A on my keyboard. I'm gonna add a color um, a color balance node, and it's right there, so I'll drag it into this noodle. And let's go ahead and just drag all the values just a tiny bit up into the blue-green area. Um, I'm not gonna explain what the difference between lift and gamma in game, in fact, I'm just gonna do a quick solution here. And there we go, we have a slightly blue or greeny scene. I wanna make it a bit more. That might actually be a bit too green, so I'll slide these over to the blue section. There we go, that looks good. It's at this point that I want to split this uh, path of nodes and noodles in two and make one version dark and make one version light and then combine the two using an alpha over node with a mask that will follow the tip of the wand that will be a big round circle. So I'm going to press Shift A on my keyboard. I'm going to bring in a color alpha over note that'll let us stack the video twice. Um, I'm going to hold Shift and left click and drag again to make that um, reroute node. And I'm going to drag that into there. And it's in these two sections that we're going to make the video lighter and darker. I'll just use a RGB curves node for that. So I'll press Shift A on my keyboard. We'll add a RGB curves under the color section node. I'm going to drag a copy right there, and this will be the, and i got to organize my nodes a bit better. Let's right click to move that one. And I'll duplicate this node, Shift D, and move the copy down to this noodle. So in all these nodes, I'll box let them so you can see them. We have the original footage combining with the dummy wand tip, and then the whole scene is being uh, made this bluey, greeny color. And in one version, we're going to make the whole scene a bit darker. And one version, we're gonna make the whole scene a bit lighter. And because the lighter version is plugged into the bottom port of this alpha over, um, it's the one that's showing up. If I switch these two around, you can see that now we can see the darker version. Let's go ahead and put them back. I'm now gonna make a mask that will follow the tip of the wand that's a really big circle. Um, and that's why we had to move the tracking marker way off so that when the tracking marker and the big circle move off, it's not lighting part of the scene still. So I'm gonna make uh, this window wider and I'll press escape to go back to my tracking. Um, but I'm gonna press A to deselect that tracker and then I'll go into mask mode again where I have that wand mask, but I'm going to uh, just hide it by clicking on this little X. And because this F, which stands for fake user, is dark, if I click X, it's not gonna actually delete this mask. Uh, so I'll click on X, and then I'm gonna make a new mask, and I'm gonna put my uh, cursor, just by left clicking, right at frame 320, um, right at that marker. I'm going to add a circle, or you can press Shift A and add a circle. I want this circle to actually be very small, so I'll press S to scale it down. And again, if your pivot point is set to median or individual origins, rather, um, you can't scale it when you tap S, so change it to median point, and then you can scale it. 
I'm going to put it right about there. I'm going to hold shift and drag and keep dragging and keep dragging. Actually, I can't really see it there. I'll uh, go to mask and clear featherweight. In fact, I'll press A a few times and then clear featherweight. Uh, and I'll try that again. I'll hold shift and I'll drag that away. I want to actually make this about as tall as the entire video. If you make this section a smaller, it won't look good. It'll just look like a brighter circle and it just won't look very convincing, I've found. Great. Let's go ahead and parent this mask to this marker. So I'll press A a few times and then I'll hold shift and right click to select the marker and control P. We have now got a large circle that's following the tip of the wand, but again, until that point where it comes into the scene, it's way off. And so that's why we put this marker way out here again. And then at the end of the scene... Uh, okay, so because our scene cuts off at frame 350, um, that's where our tracking ends. And so it doesn't matter that the circle doesn't go down with the wand or it just doesn't go away. It stays there, but we're going to stop rendering uh, right at frame 350. So we are good there. Let's go ahead and go back over to our node editor window and we're going to make this mask uh, work. We're going to name the mask first though, so I'll right in here with the mask selected. I'll type in mask.glow. Okay, let's go ahead and make that mask apply. So again, here's our alpha over where we're combining the light version of the entire scene with the dark version of the entire scene. And we'll press shift A. I'm going to input a mask under input and we're going to select mask.glow. I'll plug that in and let's see what we get. I think that worked. If you look very closely, if I orbit to move those nodes away, it does look lighter around here. Of course, I can adjust the amount of brightness just by changing this RGB curves node, which is brighter uh, to make it even brighter. Yes, it's in the right spot, but we're at the very last frame. Let's go ahead and go back to a random spot in the video and click on render and see how our entire scene looks. It looks really, really good to me. Um, I think we're finished here, except for rendering out to a final video. Uh, now, because we have a very complicated node setup, if I press escape, in fact, I'm gonna put the nodes back on the screen at the end of this video, it will take a long time to process all of these nodes out into a video. So I'm actually gonna pause the video right now and we'll come back when the render is finished. But first, of course, I'm gonna change my output under the camera tab to not a sequence of PNG image files. We're gonna make an H.264 video. And under encoding, we'll change the format from AVI to MPEG-4. So now we have an MPEG-4 with the H.264 codec, which is what YouTube and lots of devices commonly use. And under output, I'm gonna to save to my desktop and we're gonna call it Lumos Maximus. And hopefully I've spelled that right and I'll click accept. I'll pause the video now and I'll click on animation. All right, so I actually realized that I made a mistake. If I make this window a little bit wider, the movie clip editor window, and I scrub through my timeline, you can see that this large round circle, which is uh, defining where the edge of that lighter area is, um, if you watch it, it looks good all the way up until the point where my light turns off. And then in this last part of the video, the light's off, but that circular area is still there. So the area is still lit and it's noticeable. I actually rendered it out already, but I'll have to render it out again. So how do I solve this problem where this lit area is still there? I want to get rid of it after a certain point, even though my tracking marker has to stay exactly where it is. If I go into tracking mode, um, the tracker needs to be there because it's used for replacing this marker with a brown section to mask out the, the marker that I drew on the uh, wand. So I can't move that. What I can do though, I'll switch back over into mask mode, is I can animate the mask. Uh, and this is actually done by using shape keys. This doesn't look any different than animating normally. So let's go ahead and find that frame. And I can see my two keyframes still here. Um, if I go to frame 319, the circle should still be there because the wand is still on. But if I go to frame 320, it should be gone. So at 319, I'm going to press A a few times to select the mask in mask mode. And I'm going to press I on my keyboard and I will insert a keyframe. In fact, it told me that right there. It just that popped up right there. So insert shape key. That's what it just did. So now I'm going to go to the very next frame with the arrow key on my keyboard. And now I'm going to drag or press G to move and grab and place this mask way down below the video. And then I'll press I again to insert a keyframe of the circle at that location. So now if I use my arrow keys on my keyboard, you can see that 
the mask is falling along with the wand. I'll go forwards now, and as you can see now, it'll plop back down to the bottom right after frame 319, and it'll stay down there. Notice how it's still moving around though, because it's still parented to this uh, tracker, but it'll be below the edge of the video, so it'll be just fine. Okay, let's go ahead and do a quick save. Control S and then click, and I will for real render out this animation. All right, so let's finish rendering out. Let's go ahead and minimize Blender. And as promised, I will put these nodes back up on the screen at the end of this video. Let's go ahead and open the video file and check out our result. All right, so I'm super happy with that. I'm gonna close the video and open up Blender again. And as promised, I will put the nodes back up on the screen. And for the very first time on my Facebook page at facebook.com slash borncg, I will actually put a high-res screenshot up of these nodes uh, right after I post this video so you can see the nodes in just an image file. And I've already posted the result of this video, that video I just showed on my Facebook wall as well. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next one. Bye-bye.